Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Nick with Basic Gear Review, and this is the fourth edition of the Basic Gear Review podcast. I am uh, here myself as Nick, and I'm joined by my buddies, Mr. Chris Kakamese and Mr. Will Agtang. Hello. And we got our special friend, Josh Dubois, hanging out with us today. What's happening, guys? Yeah, winner of the Basic Gear Review Shred for Cash Woo! Edition 6. Yeah. yeah. Little yeah. golf clap. Yeah. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Cheer from the audience. <laughs> that <goes> wild. <laughs> Okay, so let's start with our with our main event now. We are what we've called muff diving, but we're essentially going into <laughs> checking out all of the big muffs that are currently available for production now, minus one, just because we have some new productions that are based off an old one. But uh, we're going to start with the original. Nick, what can you tell us about the big muff entity as a whole? So this is a, the fuzz pedal's been around actually for a while. Um, did a little digging when we were talking about originally writing this stuff and coming up with some ideas. And it looks like the uh, original design for a Big Muff came out in the early 60s. Uh, and the first production model came out in approximately 1971. Um, and one was given to Carlos Santana and one was given to Jimi Hendrix. Uh, and those were actually some of the, the first guys to plug in the Muff and to really help get that kind of gain and sustain, you know, as, as opposed to like a standard... Uh, you know, say, you know, sawtooth wave that you would get from like overdrive of a natural amp. Uh, the big muff kind of gave him a little bit more of a square wave, a little, 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 little rough, you know, a little, little, little rougher overdrive as opposed to just what they were getting out of their amplifier. So gave him kind of a cool tone, kind of got him in, gave him an edge on the sound, as it were, <laughs> the, on the market. Nice. <laughs> well, let's hear, let's hear the original one. We'll start off with Mr. Josh and his Getty Lee American. Let's hear the clean tone first. <laughs> That's just everything noon. Noon, yeah. yeah. Let's rock it over. Let me let me let me see the cable real quick. I'll plug it through this stingray. The ray. Let's see how different. We ray get. Mundo. Tuna. I'm in uh, I'm in D standard by the way. That's nice. You want to kick up that tone knob a little bit? No, 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 not your tone knob, the one on the pedal. Oh, yeah. Oh, my volume wasn't all the way up. Doesn't even sound that different. Let's rock the tone up to 2 o'clock. Right off the bat, you notice that the more you roll the tone uh, clockwise, the more bass gets taken out of it. So it's not necessarily like a treble roll off. It's almost like a like a bass roll off and then a treble boost. It's a full on like then, frequency shift. Yeah, it pretty yeah. much because it really changes it a lot. It changes the character quite a bit. I liked it a lot more when we rolled it up to about two o'clock. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I liked yeah, I liked the yeah. the high end, like the top end of high a little end more, got but way it, more clear. It lost a lot of that low, but I mean you could combat woofy. that with like an LS two. Yeah, yeah. But, if you can throw a clean blend, yeah. then you're you're chilling. That's the scariest thing for me when it comes to using fuzz is that I just don't want the low end to go. Oh, yeah. You know I've, I've been, like, I've been doing a search. You saw me come into the shop like just like, I don't know, dude. We like, plugged <laughs> in like, what, like four pedals? Yeah, I tried like, like four different ones and I was like not quite happy with any of them. So. Yeah. We do have a surprise that's coming on a little later. I think you saw the, the early video, the, the demo video that we did on the side, and I think you might dig that one. I'll probably pull the trigger on that one, the one that we're going to do later. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. So, that thing is cool. Uh, you, want me to, you want me to plug in? Talk about what you're playing real quick. Okay, so this is cool. This is actually a, a, new, a new acquisition for me. Um, this is a Schecter Riot 5 Session. Uh, it's an active five-string bass and has EMG pickups, three-band EQ, mm. master volume, and a pan pot. Um, really cool, man. It's all satin. Uh, all natural. It's like it's a swamp ash body and a maple neck with a maple fingerboard. And actually, these blocks uh, are actual ebony inlaid into the fret. Oh, oh wow. wow, that's cool. Yeah, dude, I'm <laughs> stoked, man. I got it used from the shop, and um, I don't know. I, I like it. I like it a lot. So let's hear it clean cool. real quick, and then I'll kick this on with the same settings I ended with. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
hold your tone back to about 10:30. From two from two to noon to 10:30, it's kind of it's a nice little sweep just yeah. in that little bit mm-hmm. of area. Mm-hmm. I like it's it. it really takes over the character of the bass like really heavily. It I, I haven't noticed a very matter what you're playing. Yeah, exactly. I've noticed that from bass to bass, it's not really that different. Like there's no. not a huge change in what's sounding like. So that's that could be a good thing and a bad thing depending on what you're going for. So that's true. Yeah, I mean if you're after that sound. Then it's yeah. all good. You literally you know, plug like, anything oh, when as I'm long as you got four clean, strings. I want X sound, but then I want the muff sound. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. Let's hand it over to Will. Let's see what your well, okay your bass sounds like. And uh, what are you playing? I am playing my number one. It's the American Special P bass with Steve Harris SPB4 pickups in it, and an Omega high mass bridge. You Let's guys hear clean, and then I'm going to start you in at all noon, and then we'll sweep through the sustain knob. Kicked you up to about 2.30, 3 o'clock. Nice. Right nice. there. Let's go. Let's just see what all the way sounds like. Farty, but nice. yeah, it's like cool it. though. It's like a good farty. It, yeah, it's, really. It's, it's really cool. It's like a charming fart. The best kind of farty. Yeah. Real quick, charming play fart. play something else. I'm gonna sweep through the tone. I'm gonna okay. go the full spectrum, starting at noon, going all the way down and all the way up. It's pretty piercing yeah. at the top. Yeah, it does. I kind of like the, the 10 to 3 mm-hmm. range. Any more than that, I think, is a little extreme. It just sucks that it loses the low end. Yeah. So yeah. Much. I, lo- yeah. I really like that high, you know? Mm-hmm. So. Well, see, that's where something like the LS2 or something that can provide you with a clean blend would come in handy. Yeah, definitely. You know? So, like, we're kind of just getting an idea of the gain structures and the different sounds. Mm-hmm. So next up on our pedal is the Little Big Muff, which, according to EHX, is... The exact same circuitry. I mean, it aesthetically looks the same, just a more pedal board friendly housing. Mm-hmm. So we have both of these at all noon. We're still in the big muff. I'm going to have you play a riff, and then I'm just going to kick it, switch it halfway through, and see if there's actually a difference in tone. Okay. different but minimal. very similar pretty minimal very similar yeah do you know do you happen to know the amount of time between these two like the release that's a good question i don't okay i think that the little bit well i know that back in in the 70s they came out with another little big muff mm-hmm. i'm not sure exactly what the difference was but this particular little big muff that we have now and that's available now i want to say was released in the early 2000s okay i could be wrong on that but it's marketed as Everything you get in the big guy just can fit on your pedal board. Okay. Mm-hmm. Pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah. That was there was like minor, minor differences when you switched. Yeah, really. It. Let's uh do you want to sweep through some of the sustain here? Yeah, sure. Do you want someone else to play? Let's go back over to Nick. Okay, cool. We'll just we'll kinda go back and forth. Starting at all noon again.
Yeah, I'm not hearing a tremendous amount of difference. I've noticed that it's it seems a little less woofy, like a little tighter. And another thing is that I've noticed there's a little bit more character. The bass character comes through a little more. Like I noticed a big difference from me to Nick for sure. Yeah, you could hear that that because that one's got a real punchy, almost jazzy type of tone because it's got that that bridge pickup in there that's really like making it real punchy. And I heard that a lot more in this one than I did in the first one when Nick played. That's yeah, that's true. Because yeah, when we were switching from bass to bass on the original, not a huge amount of difference. Yeah, but I was surprised how little difference there was from Josh to you. I was like, whoa, like, yeah. it's almost nothing. Because yeah. those two basses sound insanely different, yep. like just dry. They, yeah, they really do. So that was that was weird. So I think this one definitely um, retains the character of your bass a little more. Yeah, let's see. Let me let me put it in the Sterling with this. We're going all noon. Oh yeah. Oh, that sounds awesome. It's less farty. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, definitely. When you maxed out the gain, you could really hear the top end of the of that pickup coming yeah. through. You go back uh, like two o'clock and I'll put the tone up to two o'clock. It reminds me of the DoD Carcosa fuzz I bought. A little bit, yeah. I mean, the Carcosa's got more options on tap, but you can easily get that kind of tone right. out of it. Let's hand it over to Mr. Josh. Sustain at two, tone at two. I, I, I don't know. Jazz basses are just like the greatest. It's so hard for me to pick because I'll like I'll be with a P bass for a while and be like, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. And then I hear a jazz bass again and I'm like, oh, maybe it's not. Maybe the jazz bass is the greatest thing ever. I don't know. Like I just feel like it responds to drives and fuzzes That's why so I well. Bass. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You get the best <laughs> exactly. of both worlds. So that was yeah, that was nice. I feel like the jazz bass responds to these kinds of effects just tremendously because yeah. it's got that little bit of natural mid scoop with both pickups on it. Yeah, like, and it's got that little bit snappier top end. Uh huh. That and I, I feel think like translates well to this with with drives and fuzzes. Sometimes the mid is what makes or breaks it. So the fact that it's kind of scooped all the time makes most of them work more than they would with yeah, like something with true. like a real present mid, like a P bass. Sometimes you plug a P bass into something and it's just like, no, thank you. Like that is just <laughs> not a good low mid frequency. So I feel like a jazz bass really like it's it's a lot more versatile when it comes to these kind of pedals. Yeah. Well, let's jump over to the Nano Big Muff, which again they claim same circuitry, even smaller than the little Big Muff. So I'm gonna have Josh play the same riff and halfway through I'm just gonna switch them. They're both set to noon. That one, that one's definitely brighter right off the bat. Yeah, way more open. Lots of like headroom as opposed to the first two sounded really like real woofy. Woofy has been the word that we've been going to woofy. here, but like, <laughs> well, with a big muff, that's kind of the sound. No, and yeah, like, definitely. You gotta like that though. I mean, that's, that's exactly. let, let's be fair. That's part of the characteristic of the big muff. That's why you buy one. Oh yeah, most you definitely. Know? That's why I don't buy one actually. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe this one is for you. Well, actually, it is for you because you own this. That's true. This nano belongs to Will. Just because, okay, so I didn't know I own this. When we were unloading this, I was like, oh, whose is this? Chris is like, that's yours. Just, just goes to show how much, you know, I really use Big Muffs. That actually stuff. is yours? Like, you actually <laughs> no, I own that pedal. that pedal. I didn't know that. Wow. <laughs> I was like, oh, where'd you get this one? He's like, oh, it's, it's yours. It's from your place. You got it from your closet, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I, like, did not know that was in there. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Let's see how the character switches. Let's go from the jazz bass over back to the Sterling. Let's see if this one translates the character. I swear this never happens. I swear to God, I usually know where the hole is. <laughs> I'm kind of playing the same thing, by the way. That's okay. It, it I, I, feel like, I feel like it's happening to a couple of us. I 
feel like that one retains a pretty similar amount of character to the one right before it, the little Big Muff. Yeah. Um, it's just that the first one, the main Big Muff, is the one that kind of just like ate up all the tone. It that's, just turned it into the Big right. Muff tone, I think which so. is cool, yeah. which is usable. Like if that's what you're going for, like Nick was saying, if you want that tone, then you yeah. get that one. Yeah. Interestingly enough, that one so far has been my favorite. Actually, was the very first one because I just like like if I if I plug in a muff, I want it to be woofy and not clean. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not I'm not gonna plug in a fuzz, but I'll be like, oh, this I want this to be more clean. Like nah, dog. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, let's have Nick plug into this, and then I'm gonna twiddle some knobs. So again, we're sticking all noon into the Schichter. One thing I noticed on that is I initially went sustain from noon to max, and then I backed it off to minimum. Mm-hmm. I didn't hear a huge amount of difference from noon to max. Obviously, from you know to minimum yeah. it was there. I did really like the tone sweep on that. The one. The tone sweep—that's what I was going to bring up. That like when you like maxed it out closer to like the higher end of it, it was like, oh my god, that well, was like my favorite tone was sustain at noon, tone at three. Let's hear it. Like it's almost heading into that Zvex territory. Yeah, it makes some of that some of that absolutely. lower register stuff is crazy. Like it makes it so beefy. Like obviously it's pulled some of the low end, but that tone like it's really clear when you're going down to like the D and the C and stuff like yeah. the low notes. Yeah, dude, I'm I'm playing the shit out of that fifth string and it's it's tracking it. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's holding yeah. well on. too. Yeah, it is definitely chopping low end. I mean, we got to say that that's pretty obvious in the translation. Over the yeah, audio, you're not going to use this by itself in a live situation. But if you did, again, I can't. We can't stress mm-hmm. this enough. If you did use it mixing in a clean signal. Definitely sweet. gonna help a lot because there's only what like three, two or three pedals on this board right now that have a clean blend or an option to get your clean in there somehow. Literally three. Yeah, so there's three. So pretty much everything we're doing tonight, just just keep in mind that you could you know yeah, LS two or like add add blend in a dry signal and make it that much better. So yeah, that's a nice one. I like that that Nano a lot. I I, I think that might be my favorite so far. Let's move on over to the Deluxe. The Deluxe. Now, this is the just the standard Deluxe, like technically for guitar, right? Yes, the one. Yes. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, Electromonics Deluxe Big Muff. Uh, this is the one that actually has some extra features, right? This has a ton it's of got extra a features. Bunch of them. It's got the bass boost for, and also has a normal setting. It's got the high and low. I like that it has a no- it has a gate. It yes, has a built-in that's gate. Very so cool. So let me run hmm. down the controls from left to right. We got volume, tone, sustain, like we've had on the three so far. We have an attack control, and what this does is this lets some of your clean signal in. So when you hit the note, you get a little bit more clarity. After that, we have the gate, as Nick mentioned. Then we have a, two controls for the mids. You have your frequency selector, and then you have your Q. Or, I'm sorry. You have your frequency le- selector and your level, and then there's a switch for Q if you want a, a really high peak or a low peak. And then you also have a bass boost and a normal switch. So I have the mids disengaged, bass boost set to normal, everything else at noon. Cool. Go and hand it over to Will. Will, do the intro tone on this one. Sure. Actually, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn the attack and the gate. I'm going to leave the gate at noon. I'm going to turn the attack down. Again, disengaged. Hello. Woo! Hey-o! <laughs> We've arrived. Okay.
Yeah. I think I heard that gate clamping down a little oh, bit, yeah. too. That was yeah. really yeah. cool. Gates at, gates at noon, halfway. Oh, that's great. It's that's totally nice. working. It's I not know. like it's just a, a dummy knob. Well. Check, it, check it out. I'm, I'm giving it some rub here. Let me turn the gate off. Yeah, see? Oh, wow. <laughs> that's 9 o'clock. That's nice. Wow. That's yeah. nice. Noon is, is That's sweet. something that all of these pedals could afford to have. That's really cool. Seriously. What I want to do now, play play again. I'm going to leave the three fundamental controls that were on the previous three at noon again. Halfway through, I'm going to flick the bass boost on. Okay. That's nice. Damn, that's, that, really that's, that sounds yeah, good. That, that yeah. beefs it up like crazy. That's nice. Let's play with the attack. I'm going to leave the bass boost on. And I'm going to start rolling the attack up as you play. Okay. That's nice. That's cool. You can really hear it. It's like it brings in the clean without really obviously having a clean signal in there yeah it just gives it a little bit more clarity and yeah just a little more transparent suggest the attack mm -hmm. um i yeah i ended up going all, all the way okay nice. once once i kind of passed two o'clock is when it got really noticeable yeah i heard that happen now let's let's play with the mids a little bit i'm gonna bring the attack back to noon everything is at noon and then i'm gonna kick on the mids halfway again we have our cue set low everything else 12 o'clock okay cool do we want someone else playing yeah let's pass it over to josh okay josh dubois get on this go, we gotta go a long way around the table though yeah. Put that over there. Table way around the long. Let's do it. Okay, so again, everything's set noon. Base boost is on. What was that? Oh, everything's at noon. Base <laughs> right. boost is on. That's oh, unreal. That's really so nice. halfway through, I kicked in the mid switch. Our cue is set low. Frequency and level are both at noon. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep the cue switch low. I'm going to sweep through the frequency spectrum. Okay. So go ahead and play that same riff again. Okay, so with the with the mid level at noon, I swept through. Not a huge difference. I moved the level up to about two o'clock, and then swept through the entire spectrum. Jesus! Wow! I gave you a look when it got super oh, low, saw, and oh, yeah. I was like, "That one, that one, yeah. that one." That yeah. One. <laughs> that Keep in mind, nice. this is like not the bass one either. This is still this just is the, the guitar, deluxe, like the this regular, is the regular deluxe. And this is sounding Whoa. that good. That's Let's do the exact. I'm gonna keep the level at two. I'm gonna flick the cue up to high and do the same sweep. This is really this is really up to the value of these pedals so I really far. Like that's this crazy. One a lot more. That's probably my God favorite for one. sure. Yeah, that is very <laughs> cool. Yeah. Now, conversely, <laughs> you can cut it at the same time, which is pretty sweet too. That's like an entirely separate version of helpfulness. We, we got to spend the most time on. This. Dude, that, that just rumbles. Yeah, that yeah. shakes the whole building. The whole That's room insane. is shaking, man. That's yeah. You can hear the speaker going, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That thing's just now, we're farting. not going to demonstrate it today, but fun fun thing, you can plug an expression pedal into this and sweep the mids with your foot so it actually doubles as a wah pedal. Wow, that's extremely cool. Yeah, extremely cool. Wow. Oh, I like this one a lot. Yeah, that one's... That's, oh, man. <laughs> that's not what... I was not expecting that at all. That's super <laughs> Sounds cool. Sounds really good. Let's move on over to the tone wicker. This one is the same size as the little, 
It's got the same three controls. It's got volume, tone, sustain, but it's got two dip switches. One of them turns the tone knob on and off so you can disengage the tone from the circuit. And then I'm a little sketchy on what the wicker does. I think it adds. Well, we're going to find out. Let's mm -hmm. just find out what the wicker does. So let's just engage all at noon. Uh, tone is on and the wicker's off, so this should be just normal muff. halfway through there i disengaged the tone okay so that's what happened yeah that's that's crazy got, yeah i got shockingly different yeah i'm gonna put the tone back on and then halfway through i'm gonna engage the wicker okay Wicker is adding just a little bit of that high end. A clarity. lot of transparency lot of too. You yeah, can that's, really hear that's, the bass in there. That's basically what's going on with those two switches. I, I did want to mention when you activate and deactivate the tone switch, it's literally bypassing the tone knob completely. It's taking yeah. it right out of the circuitry, and then the wicker is just changing whether it's going to be have more high end or just a little bit more low end. It basically ends up being like an additional tone switch. Um, but it seems to be adding some decibels. I don't know if we just heard it out of the high end, but it was definitely adding some decibels. Well, yeah, yeah I think when you when you take one of the pots out of the circuit it's always going to add more i noticed that with the red llama this uh, i know this is way huge but when they came out with the camel toe and the red llama had the high cut the red llama was quieter hmm, okay. so i think that's kind of what's happening here okay i like that a lot i really like the tone the wicker circuit is nice out and then the wicker on yeah. that was crazy you could really hear the bass through that which yeah is nice. that pedal still on I was going to say, that's a noisy little bastard, but it, it could be that. How many pedals were we running? One, two, three, four, a <laughs> oh, yeah, whole we bunch. A lot. <laughs> a lot, yeah. Yeah. Like we have 12, 13, 14. Hell yeah. It's yeah. a lot of muffs to dive into. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I'm going to hand it back over to Nick. I'm going to have Nick play some tones. Cool. Moving on over to the germanium. This one is badass. No, same. This is the one I'm really excited about. Like, I almost pulled the trigger on this one. But yeah, I only it. played yeah. with it a little bit, but I was like blown away. I was not ready for what I was I bought this used on Reverb for about 60 bucks last week just for this. It's a great deal. So if one of y'all wants to buy it, I'll do like a bidding war and y'all can have Dude, it. Dude, 120 bucks. It's yours right now. <laughs> Shut up. 120 bucks is yours, you mean. Uh. Okay, so this one's got two different circuits. This has got a distortion and an overdrive. And uh, actually, I might need Josh to twiddle some knobs here. <laughs> so we got we got two separate circuits. These those are independent of each other, and then you can drive one into the other. Okay, so on the distortion side, I gotta like look. We have a gain, bias, volts, and volume for the distortion side. Let's 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 play with the volts real quick. dying battery kind of yeah voice. i was gonna say i noticed when you pull back on the volts it's, it's a lot more like a hard clip type of sound yeah it came in with that a lot definitely. more definitely let's see what the bias does we play that same riff Kind of given it's kind of changing the shape of the square a little bit. Is that what I, I was trying to decipher? Is that what the I was technical hearing term? Too. Like it sounds like it's kind of like a shorter 
pulse okay. to a more, you know, a larger pulse that's kind of a little bit more woofy. Okay, I see. Versus that sputtery kind of vibe. Yeah, because I heard what was happening, but I couldn't like put my finger on what I was yeah. hearing. See, there. I always go back to the Mastertron, and I just think of the pulse width control. And when yeah. I hear, when I remember what that knob does, and I hear it, I'm like, oh, okay, I think I, I think I see what's mm-hmm, going on. Mm-hmm. Let's go. A lot of using the, the voltage actually real quick. I just want to do this real quick. I'm yeah, going to no play a similar riff, but I'm going to play a little bit more staccato and a little slower, and you'll really hear it start to clamp down too. In addition to being like more uh, glitchy, it'll begin to clamp down like it almost has its own natural built-in gate. Okay. Yeah, at the yeah. end there, I had the volt and the bias. That's all the nice. Way down. I like that. I've I've always preferred that kind of a fuzz tone, that really like glitchy lot, type yeah. of tone. Mm-hmm. So that's really cool. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. That's the first time I've heard a muff type pedal do that. Yeah. That's Let's nice. flick it over to the overdrive side. So I kind of flicked through the gain a little bit, and then I turned the bias all the way down. Let's let's sweep the bias all the way up. I wish I had brought my four string. I'm still so uncomfortable with a five string. You want to play the Sterling? Uh, a little bit, actually. Yeah, can it. I do that? Yeah. Yeah. That's so cut. our bias is all the way down, and I'm just going to sweep it up as we go. got a pretty transparent overdrive for sure like you can hear that that's a yeah the overdrive if you set the gain low is really nice yeah towards cool. the about halfway through i kind of flicked on the distortion and i was twiddling both the gain and the bias knobs nice. for each so it sounded good there was some good oh, stuff like going it, yeah. on yeah, yeah there was some good that's happening. this is one of the ones where you really got to sit there with it for a little uh-huh. while for more time than we have tonight especially when you could stack them it's yeah a whole different world so i believe the distortion comes before the overdrive circuit is what it sounds like okay um, I could be mistaken, but that's what it seems like. Um, let's go back down now over. Let's switch it over to Will for a minute. And let's go over to now we finally have an actual bass product. The bass Big Muff. The OG. My understanding is that what's going to differentiate this one is that it has the bass switch, a normal switch, uh, and then what's the what's the final switch? I can't remember what the, what's dry. the final one. The dry. Uh, and then it also has a direct out as well, whereas the other one just has a regular effect out. This mm-hmm. one has a regular dry out and an effect out, right? The, yeah, this one has a dry and effect out. The three-way switch, like I said, dry, normal, bass boost, and then the same three volume tone sustain. But the difference here, as indicated by the color, is that they're, they're going for a little bit of a lower gain circuitry, uh, similar to the classic Green Rush and Big Muff. Um, because that was really popular amongst bass players. So with these three, we have the, the race regular bass Big Muff, the Nano Bass, and the Deluxe. All of those are green, indicating that they have a little bit lower gain structure, in addition to kind of giving you that either bass boost and or dry mm-hmm. signal. Okay. So let's go with everything at noon and normal on the switch. to sweep through the sustain here.
already it seems like it would settle a little better. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, it's, it's like this is clearly a better choice. Modeled for, for bass. I can see why they yeah. would use that different circuitry, like that green Russian, because it does make a big difference. Oh yeah. It. Let's let's sweep through the tone real quick. Okay. Again, I'm liking it, the tone at like 2 o'clock. Yeah, I really prefer the tone on most of these at about 2 or yeah. more. It's just the issue is that it always pulls the low end out. So that's where we can engage the dry switch or the I'm bass gonna, boost I'm going to turn something. the gain up a little bit. I'm going to go to about 2 o'clock as well. Okay. And I'm going to flip through the different settings. I'm going to start at normal. I'm going to flip down to dry and then up to bass boost. ended back on normal okay nice the dry is really nice really yeah helpful i like the dry a lot it works well yeah. i th the only thing that i've well the next pedal the, the later ones are going to have a, like a resolution for this but i i noticed when i had that that i didn't like that the dry was a switch as opposed to a knob you know like a blend that was my only real gripe with that pedal but yeah. other than that i really did like when i had that on my board that was a really nice one let's go i'm going to put it back to normal mm -hmm. i'm gonna have the nano set to normal everything at noon we're gonna do a side by side okay, i'll cool. switch them halfway <laughs> that was the closest any two have been yeah. so far yeah almost identical yeah that's crazy <laughs> if i had not heard the click i probably wouldn't have known that you switched them because that was really close Nick, any info on these? Well, the only big side with the with the nano, or the only big downside with the nano, is that you don't get the dry out. You you still have your normal input and you're affected out, but you don't get the dry out, so you can't automatically split your signal, which basically means you'll have to have an LS2 if you want to get your own clean signal right. to really cut through with the when going with the nano bass big mod. That's true. Yeah. Plus, if I remember um, correctly, it's missing either bass or dry. One you don't of the two get is the missing. Bass boost. You, you, know, you don't get, get the bass boost one. Yeah, okay. uh, I'm going to flick it over to dry halfway through. If you play me another. Okay. Riff. Me or did the dry seem more prominent? It seemed, yeah, definitely a lot more prominent than yeah. it did in the first one. Yeah. It was, it was, and it, I feel like it doesn't sound like a like a true dry signal, you know, because it doesn't quite sound the same as when the pedal's off. So it's like, just almost like, like a, it's going through some kind of filter. Yeah, like some something is happening yeah. in there that's changing it up a little bit. But it is, it's definitely louder than it was on the um, first Big Muff, first bass. Oh yeah, muff. it's definitely way more present. Well, let's switch over to the deluxe. This is the fun one. This one, I haven't really got to play with yet. I played with it a little bit and it's pretty cool and this one is the one that fixes my issue of having a dry switch you know because this one's got the blend knob on there which is like i want to do one thing real quick i'm going to switch places with you okay. i'm going to have you twiddle some knobs okay so we're at we're at all noon right uh yeah everything's at noon right now Okay, so we'll just mess with the blend a little bit first. Go ahead and keep playing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. See, that's that, that really helps because I can get it like right about 2 o'clock is where I like it because I've always preferred to have my driven signal a little bit louder than my dry. I just want the dry to be there to kind of back it up. Yeah. I feel like with the first two bass big muffs, the dry is too prominent, which is sometimes the issue I have with other pedals. Like so people just like their, their dry a little louder than I do. So this is really nice because I can get that drive tone in there, but still have that little bit of attack back there. Yeah. I want the drive to be the voice. Exactly. Exactly. Just, yeah. So um, I'm going to keep the blend at noon and then we'll just run through tone next if you want to do that. All right, cool. I 
noticed with the tone all the way down, it gave it a really a really cool like big fat character with that dry behind it. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I, I like that a lot. Usually, I'm a fan of we've been talking about two o'clock or more with the tone, but on this one, I really like the tone actually all the way down. That sounded really cool. I thought so too. Okay, cool. So then we'll do um, sustain real quick, and then we'll move on to the gate and the crossover. That extra. Cool yeah, stuff. I'm gonna flick it over to Josh for that one. Okay, cool. So we'll do sustain real quick. All right. really even sweep we were talking about with the earlier one there was one where it kind of you hit a certain point and it disappeared or like you yeah know what i mean this is a very even from bottom to top a really even sweep which is nice and it's it's sounding really similar to the other two gain structure wise which is cool so you know if you're, if you're graduating from one of these to this one it's not going to be a very big difference yeah i would even good. i would say script skip to graduation just go straight to the deluxe that's true but i mean if you're working with one of these and you haven't yet pulled the trigger which was the issue for me for the longest time because it's hard to like pull the trigger on something this intense if you don't know for sure if that's your tone you know what i mean that's true yeah. so if this sells you it's a nice jump up without being too different you know what i mean that's good yeah okay cool so let's now demonstrate we got, some of that crossover yeah we'll do some of the crossover stuff now to be completely fair I don't totally know what I'm doing here. <laughs> just a disclaimer, okay? So I'm just going to twiddle and just see how it sounds. All right, you're good. Okay, cool. So, yeah, that was kind of kind of like... Well, it's a low-pass filter and a high-pass filter on the crossover thing, and I was kind of trying to figure out. I heard things happening, but like I wasn't totally sure. So the high-pass kind of just like rolls off lows, obviously, and low-pass rolls off highs. So you just kind of dial in uh, something a little bit more um, tailored to what you want to hear. It's changing the filter sweep. It's changing the, the complexity of the, the fuzz filter. Okay. So it's making it like a little bit more, a little bit less throaty. Mm -hmm. You know, you, I almost kind of noticed it. It's, it's funny because you can almost hear it like wahing a little bit when you when you change the low pass and the high pass filter. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because exactly. technically like the, the potentiometers are the same, it's just the effect that's different. So mm -hmm. you're just changing the, the filter of the of the fuzz. So it's, it makes it a little bit more throaty or a little bit more bright. You know, if you like that woofy or the kind of like oh, oh kind of distortion, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, definitely. That's like, pretty cool. I think it's a very cool thing, especially if you know how to use it correctly. I'm sure you could dial it in well, but I don't, so <laughs> that's a problem. All right, cool. So let's move on. Move on to the metal muff. This one is I'm gonna switch spots with you again. Yeah. Because you know more about this stuff. We'll just we'll we'll go quick with the metal muff. Yeah, we'll go quick because it's kind of a weird one. This is more of an honorable mention anyway, yeah. just for fun. We're gonna have Josh play this one too. A little EQ tweak in there, a little little shifting through the real deep. Yeah, that's an interesting one. That one's got like a it's a real like the crazy heavy gain structure. Yeah, like really and it brings. Thick. I mean, the bass knob brings quite a bit of the low end. I mean, uh -huh. it's not really the true fundamental low end, but mm -hmm. it's still a boomy. It sounds like you have to end. make it work for low end. Yeah, it sounds like it's very much tailored more for like guitar players. Oh, most definitely. The, the top end is uh, pretty dynamic though, as opposed to the other ones, which that's is pretty true. nice. Yeah, Actually, that was pretty that cool. True. Again, with the clean blend, you could probably do something cool with something this. very cool. Yeah, be good for intros and stuff. Yeah, like that, getting sure. some like yeah. Oh, yeah. lemmy oh, yeah. type oh, yeah. stuff out of there. And that's it's pretty got, cool. Like, I'm just gonna sweep through the mids real quick. I'm gonna leave the bass and treble at about two o'clock. I'm gonna sweep through the mids from nothing to all the way. It's got a nice yeah. sweep. Yeah, I does. actually liked it. It did sound pretty good, though. Yeah, it's it's a fun, it's just trippy. over the top. Yeah, you know, exactly. You, you can probably use it somewhere, not everywhere. Moving on to the coveted Green oh. Russian Big Muff. Sweet. Nick, you want to play? Go for it, dude. It's all you. All right. <laughs> this is cool. Our my my coworker in instrumental music, Jeremy Gift, let us borrow this one for the uh, for the show. Yeah, huge thank so, you. So big Jeremy. shout out to to Jeremy, man. Thank you. Let's check it out. All noon.
I can definitely see why that's the one that they modeled the base pick mumps after because that is like the low end response of that is like yeah. really natural and not too boomy. You know what I mean? That's, yeah. It's, it's really nice. It's definitely still kind of retains that woofy quality. Uh huh. L a lot of low end shines through and it's a little bit more transparent because it's not trans. It's not um, imparting a huge amount of that muff. Yeah, exactly. I really like it. That's the first time I've really sat down and heard it like, yeah. in person. I'm going to just kind of sweep through the distortion okay. on this. setting on there was usable that's extremely cool that was a like it's such a noisy pedal yeah. oh, yeah, oh yeah it is. i love it but it's so it. noisy holy shit <laughs> i loved it at minimum and i loved it at maximum minimum was surprising it minimum was just was like a little cool. bit of a preamp thing let's going go, on let's go real quick again yeah. It reminds me a little bit of the germanium, yeah. but better suited. Uh -huh. The the overdrive channel specifically. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it does. It sounds just like kind of like a dark, gainy overdrive. I like it. I love it. Wow. Real That's quick, cool. I want to sweep through the tone. Okay. And then we'll move out. Everything. Everything good. It's no surprise that thing is like $300 online. Yeah. yeah. For real? Yeah, yeah dude. Damn. Yeah, man. In the 90s, you used to be able to get these things for like 40 bucks, something like that. Like, the people were, you couldn't, you couldn't give these things away. <laughs> and then cats like Juan Alderete got all famous and using the green the green Russian big muff and it's like yeah oh man you got you got to give a paycheck to put get one that of these. out with a gate on it dude it's like, it oh my god right <laughs> <Yeah. now. laughs> wasn't super stoked with the tone all the way up but again about the two o'clock neighborhood mm -hmm. loved it yeah that's that's a, it's really, a very aggressive yeah. really cool pedal yeah. that's I'm crazy. gonna go I'm gonna go all noon on this one and we are going to compare it to the brand new Electro Harmonics Green Russian big muff. Clone. Yeah. It comes in the finally. Same, finally right. We're finally here. <laughs> it comes in the same size as the Nano Big Muff, the Nano Base Big Muff, same packaging. It's got the same, for the most part, the same color, that army green. Yeah. It's got, you know, and Nick found something special on the inside. Oh, yeah, I did. It's uh, it, there, There's some sleep lyrics on oh, the inside. Oh, sleep? Oh, yeah, it's that's sleep. awesome. It's follow the smoke into the rift-filled land or something like wow. that. Like, yeah, it's some lyrics from a sleep song. The dude, oh, hashtag true cult, man. Like, right. Yeah. Once you, get, just... you get about eight minutes into the song and he says that, and that's all he says. <laughs> <laughs> the <weekend. laughs> Thank sleep, you, Matt Pike. that's gnarly. Love you. So I'm going to go all noon with the original Green Russian. I'm going to switch it halfway to the new. It's it's similar for sure, but I feel like it's just not quite as volatile as the original one. You know what it I mean? Really that thing isn't. is like that's like a weapon when you hear that thing. Our volumes down. are not lined up though. To be fair, the Green Russian Big Muff does have a lot more volume. We're probably we're feeling it a lot more than we are the the little baby. That's true. However, I I noticed like a definite um, high end roll off in the newer one versus the mm -hmm. old one, and I'm not sure if that's a volume thing. It could very well be. You could just affect it by hitting it harder, but it just when seemed a little bit more like. When, when Chris and I were screwing around with it with Jeremy earlier at the shop, we noticed that, uh, interestingly enough, like the low end is good and woofy and big with the original Green, green Russian Big Muff. But strangely enough, the treble, when you hit it, it's like more cutting. So it almost is like balanced very well. It, it like like the high end compensates for the woofiness of the low end by making the high end like way just more piercing. cutting. Okay, that yeah, makes way sense. punchier. That makes sense. So it's just, it's good old Russians just putting shit together from like random cardboard boxes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's magic, dude. Let me see if I have the volumes a little more even. I'm gonna start new, go back to the original. Okay, so pretty damn close. Yeah, that is pretty definitely a, a difference when you match those volumes. That's like that is very close. That's remarkable. 
What one thing I do have to say in favor of the new guy? Can we just for a second just hear the buzz that's going on? So this is the, the Russian, and this is the new one. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had both on there for a second. To be fair, we had both on for a second. It is definitely quieter. Now, and again, we're running, what, 13 pedals or something like that? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, an insane amount of pedals at the same time. Um, so it is, and we noticed at the shop, too, way quieter. Definitely. Way, way quieter. And it's currently in manufacture, and it's like $88. So $80. Is it $80. $80 and 60 cents. 80 oh. bucks and 60 cents, as opposed to $300 and a kidney. Yeah. <laughs> right? Honestly. So, now, yeah. Before we finish this off, we do have a couple honorable mentions on our Big Muff board because that completes everything with the Big Muff name. Mm -hmm. But a few, what was a few months ago, Way Huge came out with their Russian pickle, which was their clone of the original Green Russian Big mm -hmm. Muff. So let's just kind of just compare the three side by side. Okay. I'm going to start with the original, I'm going to go to the new, and then I'm going to go to the Russian. Okay. Again, big difference in volume. Yeah. Huge. Started because the original's straight noon. I had to pump up the volume a little bit on the new one. And the Russian pickle, the volume's like at three o'clock. It's like three o'clock. Yeah, that's, 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 that's almost high. everything on tap. Yeah. They are that, pretty though, similar, though. They yeah, were very you know, similar. And, and again, like Nick was saying, we were playing with him with Jeremy on guitar. The Russian pickle lost hard. Really? Hardcore. It, it was just, upsetting. Yeah, it was, it was super upsetting. fizzy. If you didn't have the other two side by side, it's like, oh, that's pretty cool. It's fun. Mm -hmm. I like it. But compared to the, the original, the Russian just loses. <laughs> yeah. For okay, real. where is the where is the gain in the tone on the original Russian? Twelve o'clock? Everything twelve. Everything's twelve o'clock. Where is the gain in the tone on this on the, the Russian pickle, the way huge product? Uh, gain and tone are both noon. Or are both noon. So let's just do a one, two real quick of just those pedals. Okay. Starting original. Way better than yeah. we heard at the shop with guitar. It is much stronger on bass than it was with the guitar. Definitely. I heard it with the guitar and I was pissed. I was like, dude, come on, that's it. <laughs> like I was, it was a little like, oh, come on, way huge. You're not, you're not doing me justice here. But no, it does definitely sound. It sounds like they had bass players in mind and never said anything because they want guitar players to buy it too. It's thumping. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's thumping. I believe that entirely. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. Here's because the they don't have anything that's like driven toward bass, really, right? No, like, but they have, like, they have everything this, works so well. Is with it, it the pork loin that has the clean blend? Something yeah. like that, and so but like we that's even the one found that the Green Rhino sounds way better. Amazing, like, Green it Rhino's my favorite. So good, today. right? This this calls back to a conversation that you and I are having again earlier today. That the pork loin is the one that they pitch for pitch for bass players, when really that's clearly the one that's better for guitar players. Yeah, and then the Green Rhino is like, oh, guitar players will love it, and it's like bass players are like that one though, but that one's better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, Green Rhino for bass is my favorite drive pedal. That I well, oh, dark glasses. That's a whole other thing. That doesn't even count. It's like it's <laughs> a whole nother level. Fair, yeah. <laughs> whole nother level for reasonably priced stuff that you mm -hmm. can easily get at almost yeah. any store. Yeah. The Green Rhino is the one. Definitely, I agree with that. So bitch. I completely agree with that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sweep through this Russian pickle a little bit. On the I'm gonna start with the gain. Okay. That's that's killer. And on top of that, I mean, Josh, you're playing is like crazy. It's so cool. Like, that, that, that helps a lot. But like, yeah, that was that was that was pretty cool. I like that one. It got to a real, a real like um. Somebody else say something. The attack, I just lost the attack yeah. was really just like clippy. I don't know how to explain it, but really yeah. snappy. Yeah, yeah. I, I lost the words for that one. But it's I, grindy. I was looking at you and yeah. I was like, man, it's like I was like trying to like mime a skateboarder going down a rail. It's like it's grindy. <laughs> it's grindy. <laughs> <laughs> that one. Where's yeah, my tech that was deck? Cool. Well, oh, here, what, what do we like between the new green Russian and the Russian pickle? The Ooh. the shit that they imprinted on the PC board on the inside. That's where. They uh -huh. <laughs> well, I remember Nick had a had a comment about it when we were playing with it with guitar. Which mm -hmm. th we, this is a whole other thing right now tonight. 
But Nick said that the new Green Russian Big Muff is twice as good at half the price. Yes. Yeah. And, and that like, was that was the new one versus the Russian pickle. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And at the store earlier, like six hours ago, I was all on board, but now it's pretty damn close. It's a fair fight. But mm-hmm. therefore, for being pretty damn close, the new EHX is still half the price. Half the mm-hmm. price. Now I can't say twice as better. <laughs> yeah. But I can still say half the price. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. And the Russian pickle, the way huge, I have to say I'm like definitely a clan of the gut shot culture first thing i did is i popped it open to see what was on the inside no dip switches what you have on deck is what you have as opposed to the rut to the swollen pickle which is refreshing for sure because which yeah. is cool but that means it like doesn't mean you can get like the secret stuff that's true but <laughs> i, I like mean like secret stuff. that's true that's true but for people like me who don't like to take their stuff apart mm. that's pretty nice <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then i just want to end it off here with another honorable mention to the swollen pickle it's George Tripp's version of his, you know, take on a Big Muff with more versatility on deck. And yet again, another funny name that is kind of the polar opposite. You know, you got a Big Muff and a Swollen Pickle. Yeah. You know right. what I mean? Like, yeah. let's, let's just roll that and we will just, we will call it a day after the pickle. And uh, you want to switch up to playing a little bit? You know what? Let's have Josh play yeah, us out. I like man. it, dude. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm loving this. Just wanted to make it unanimous because I was yeah. still on oh, the same yeah. boat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you you, up you hear around. me and Nick play all the time. This is nice. Yeah. Should we close? Should we close it with this? Oh, yeah. Or absolutely. We keep... Okay, cool. So, uh, hey, guys, thanks everybody for listening and watching and subscribing and all that stuff. We're going to leave you with the swollen pickle. I'll let Will and Nick say their farewells as well. BGR signing off. <laughs> hashtag, <laughs> hashtag gut shot culture. <laughs> <laughs> I had my volume all the way down. Dude, like he was playing, you couldn't even hear it. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, holy oh. shit. That's a wrap!